Hey, I'm Rick, and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today, we're going to be doing a review for the Cooler Master Hyper T2. So the Cooler Master Hyper T2 is pretty much Cooler Master's entry-level budget tower-style cooler. There are other uh, budget coolers from Cooler Master, but they're not tower-style generally. So uh, today, we're going to just do an overview, see basically how it stacks up so far to the other coolers we've compared and see if you know if this is maybe a good buy for you if you're on a budget and if you want to put less than twenty dollars on a cooler because by the way the msrp on this cooler in the us is around 25 bucks and in canada it's around 30 dollars however this is one of those coolers that is always on sale like if you're buying at msrp it's probably just because you didn't shop around because you, you can always buy it in canada pretty much around 20 bucks and in the us you know between 15 and 20. So if you're shopping for this cooler, do wait till you find it on sale. It generally, if it's not on sale somewhere, it's generally because you've picked the wrong week because the week after it'll be on sale on one of the major sites like Amazon, like uh, Newegg or whatnot. Um, so just to let you guys know, as usual, the affiliate links will be down below for Amazon for Canada and the US. So if you do pick up this cooler, do use my Amazon links because it'll help the channel out and it'll help me be able to buy more products to do more reviews for all of you out there. Uh, so let's start with an overview on the cooler, see what it's offering. So this cooler has a dual heat pipe design and it's a looped heat pipe design, uh, meaning that you actually have four contact points on the bottom of the cold plate. Um, the fan that comes with it is a 92 millimeter fan and it can spin up all the way to 2800 RPM. Uh, theoretically, uh, the size on the cooler is 140 millimeters high by 90 millimeters wide and 76 millimeters deep. Uh, what that means is that clearance issues should not be there for most motherboards unless you're going with a micro or mini ITX, uh, mini ITX or micro ATX. Uh, but that depends on the spacing and which socket you're dealing with. But I'd say that most of them are not going to be presenting a problem with that. Um, other than that, uh, you know, it's a four pin design on the fan this time, so it will be compatible with the PWM. Um, and that pretty much gives you a good overview of the cooler. Now, before we go at the performance, I just want to make a couple of notes about the cooler itself. Uh, the design and the construction is pretty good, uh, the f you know, from Cooler Master. The one thing that I was sort of disappointed a little bit about is actually the cold plate. Um, when I look at, co at coolers, when I look at cold plates, what I like to see is almost no spacing in between where the copper and aluminum meet and where the different copper pipes meet. Unfortunately, in this cooler, and I don't know if you saw it in the close-up, uh, there's actually quite a bit of spacing in between the copper elements underneath. What that means is you always wind up with a little bit of thermal paste that stays stuck in between the copper pipes. And it means also that on average, when I'm installing this cooler, I put a little more paste than usual on it because you have to sort of fill in those spaces and you're you're generally losing heat dissipation with that. But overall, the construction is what you expect from Cooler Master. So it's a, you know, it's a good cooler. It should last you a while. Uh, so let's look at the performance numbers because overall, so far in the coolers we've looked at, it is the best performing cooler. It easily beats the stock, even Ryzen coolers. Uh, with a delta temperature, in my case, around 29 degrees Celsius. So it keeps, uh, you know, it keeps my Ryzen 3 under like around 50 degrees, even overclocked at 3.9, 1.3 volts, which is what all these tests are done at. Uh, so it's actually a pretty good performer for the money you're investing into the cooler, especially, like I said earlier, if you're getting it on sale. Um, however, if we go to the noise chart, Noise chart this so far is really the noisiest cooler, but at the same time, it's the fan that spins the fastest. And when I do my tests, I basically set the fan at 100% so that we can put all the coolers on a steady, on an even level, because I don't want the motherboard spinning down the fan and tricking it. And overall, if we let the PWM take over, all the coolers are pretty much going to stay in the same temperatures because it'll just lower the RPMs on your fan when your CPU is cool enough and then up it when it goes up. So. You're not really knowing overall if you push it to the max which cooler is performing the best. So it is the noisiest fan and by quite a bit. Like we're, we're talking about like leaf blower territory when it's full on. 
uh, I couldn't really stay in the room for a very long time with this running 100% like it would it would actually annoy me after a while however you know on the upside it is something it does have a four pin connector what that does mean is that unless you're pushing the cooler to its max 24 7 if you set the setting on the motherboard to you know normal control or if you set up you know a, a manual fan curve you will be able to lower the noise and because the fan won't be spinning all out 100 percent of the time however if you're overclocking really to the limit on like an i7 you know 7700 6700 which generates a lot of heat problem is is your fan might be spinning pretty high pretty often so it is good to keep in note that noise wise um, it's maybe not the best option for those type of CPUs if you're overclocking really pushing it to the max and actually this is pretty much my recommendation this is where this tower style cooler fits in I would keep I would say that if someone's looking to push really the Ryzen 3 Ryzen 5 to the max even Ryzen 7 I would say you could start entering into territories where it'll be decent uh, this is actually a pretty good cooler for you uh, however if you're really looking at the top top end cooler so the i7s and even you know I said Ryzen 7 but if you're looking at a Ryzen 1800x or something and you're put trying to hit like 4 4.1 gigahertz I wouldn't say the cooler is going to do it it's just that the noise that's going to come with it is going to be really unpleasant and for maybe a couple of bucks extra if you're already paying like in those prices for the CPU I don't think you're aiming for this level of budget cooler but at the same time it'll get you there like the cooling performance is there it just comes with a lot of noise so I would say this is a perfect product like I said for Ryzen 3 overclocking an i5 uh, because basically it'll be able to dissipate the heat and the fan will probably be spinning around 50% most of the time so it is a good cooler for those types of you know people looking at that um, if you're looking for higher end, we're going to get to those coolers, but you know, for like maybe five or 10 bucks extra, you have coolers that will keep your CPUs at the same temperatures, but this fan won't be necessarily spinning at 100% all the time. So overall, I hope this guy, this gives you a good idea of the, uh, Cooler Master Hyper T2. So once again, decent budget cooler, it's worth your money. And, you know, all you have to decide is how much money did you plan on actually putting on the cooler. Um, and we'll be looking at a couple of other options because around this price point, however, I would say the budget competition is actually pretty fierce. You have like three or four good options. So, you know, I'm looking forward in the next few days to review those other coolers, see how they stack up. But overall, this is a good buy for your money. Just be aware if you're spinning the fan top you know 100% all the time it's a very noisy cooler however so as usual guys any comments any questions leave them down below um, oh yeah one last thing before I leave you guys sorry about this really important to note: if you're using the AMD AM4 platform because by the way the cooler is compatible all the way up to AM4 right out of the box okay if you're using the AM4 platform please note that your cooler will not be horizontal like most you know imagine your case is standing up most coolers you'll you know put front facing get the air in push out to the exhaust this cooler because of the way they designed the bracket you'll have to place it vertically so it'll either be pulling the heat from your from your graphics cards and exhausting it out the top or you can have you can put you know like fans at the top of your case pulling cold air in and actually, um, yeah, sorry, pulling cold air in, blowing it to your graphics cards or helping exhaust your graphics cards. Uh, personally, I don't like that orientation for a cooler, but I mean, it has its advantages. It's, you know, trial and error, but depending on your case, depending on your setup, depending on your graphics card, if it's actually better than a, a horizontal cooler, but do be aware of that. Uh, so sorry, uh, as I was saying, questions, comments down below, leave them. I'll try to answer them as much as possible, as quick as possible. If I know the answer, I will. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to get the information, get back to you. Or, you know, if I can't find it, well, I'm sorry, I'll let you know. Um, and, you know, as usual, likes and follows are really, uh, subscriptions are really loved. So it helps the channel, helps me grow. And I hope I'll see you guys in my next review.